All right, today I want to show you how to implement the Newton Raphson algorithm in Python. I have another video explaining the algorithm and today we're going to focus on the implementation. So I have opened up my IDE, I'm using Spider, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define our function that we want to find the roots of. So I'm going to write def f of x and we're going to go with a polynomial here. So Let's do 4 times x to the 4th power plus 2 times x minus 1. So that's a polynomial of 4th order and we would like to know the roots of that polynomial. And for that we also need the derivative of the function f, so I'm call that df. And that's of course easy to compute for a polynomial, so that's going to be 16 times x to the 3rd plus 2. And now the first thing I'm going to do, and that's always a good idea, is I'm going to visualize that function so that I can get a rough idea where the roots are at. And for that, I'm going to import numpy and matplotlib.pyplot. And then I'm going to uh, define a bunch of x values by using numpy's linspace. Uh, let's go from minus 4 to 4 and do 100 values. So what this does is um, it creates an array with 100 entries evenly spaced from minus 4 to 4. So I'm creating an array of 100 x values and then I'm going to compute the corresponding y values, so the function evaluated at these points which I can just do by y values equals f of x values. And then I have an array with a bunch of x values and an array with a function evaluated at these x values and that I can plot. So first I'm going to plot the horizontal line at y equals zero. And then I'm going to plot the x values and the y values. And if I run that, you can see that our function might intersect uh, uh, y equals zero at the x-axis here, but we're not quite sure. So we need to take a closer look at the coordinate range from minus two to two. So I'm just going to change the boundaries here. And as you can see, okay, the function does actually intersect the x-axis twice. We can take an even closer look maybe by going from minus one to one. And that gives us a rough idea where the roots of this function are. So one of them looks to be about at minus 0.9 and the other looks to be about at 0.5. And that's very valuable information because as I said in the other video, we need to pick a starting value for our algorithm and it will work the better the closer our starting value is to the actual root. Now what we also need is a very small number delta that tells the algorithm when to stop. So I'm going to uh, define that right now and I'm going to pick 10 to the minus 10. You can go smaller if you want. And now we're ready to implement the algorithm. And if you remember what the algorithm does is while the absolute value of the function evaluated at our current best guess of what the root is, I'm just going to call that guess, is greater than delta, then we need to compute a better guess from the previous guess. And the better guess is defined as the previous guess minus the function evaluated at the previous guess divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at the previous guess. And let me at this point just print the current guess so that we can see the convergence. And of course we have to supply a value for this guess. So we are going to fill this variable with the starting guess. Let's go with 0.9 and then the algorithm is going to run until this condition is satisfied and is going to print each of the intermediate steps. So I'm going to run this and as you can see this converges really fast to this minus 0.91 something something. Now that's probably the quickest way to implement the algorithm but it has a big problem. Because if the algorithm does not converge to a root this program will actually run forever because there's no other stopping condition. This while loop has the potential of going on forever, which is not very good practice. So let me just put the print at the end so that we just print the result 
and show you another way of implementing this algorithm. This time I'm just going to write a for loop for n in range 1000. So at a maximum, this is going to iterate 1000 times. And if after 1000 iterations, it has still hasn't found the root, it's just going to stop. And let me also tell you about a different convergence condition. So what we did in the previous uh, version is we said if the absolute value of the function evaluated at our current best guess is smaller than this very small number, we assume that we are reasonably close to the root, to a root of the function. Which is okay, but there's a different way of doing this. We could also say if two subsequent guesses are closer together than our very small number delta, then we assume that the algorithm has converged. And I'm going to show you how to implement this condition right now. And for that, I'm going to explicitly need a variable for our next guess. So next guess is just guess minus f of guess divided by df of guess. Sorry. So that's just what we had before. Before I did it all in one step. So I just computed guess minus f guess over df of guess and put it into the variable guess all in one step. But now I want to write it to a new variable next guess first. And then I want to check if the absolute value of next guess minus guess, so next guess minus previous guess, if you want, is smaller than delta. And in that case, I want to print the next guess because in that case, I assume that the algorithm has converged to a root. And then I want to break, which means just break out of the for loop. We have found our root. We don't need to iterate anymore. But if we do not meet this condition, this if condition, we need to start the next iteration. And to do the next iteration, we need to write the value of next guess to guess. So as I said, this is what I all did in one step in the previous installment of the algorithm. And now we explicitly need to write the next guess to guess so that we can then compute the next next guess from this. And we can run this. And as you can see, this converges almost to the same number. So there's only a difference in the very last digits here. Now we have found one of the roots. How do we find the other? So a good idea would be to change the starting value. So we started at minus 0.9 and we found the root at minus 0.91. So let's maybe start at plus 0.5. And as you can see, we find the other positive root, which happens to be at 0.43. Now this is a polynomial of fourth order. So unless some of these roots happen to coincide, there actually should be four roots. And in fact, there are just two of these are complex roots. Now the great thing is both the algorithm and Python support finding the complex roots. So we actually do not need to change anything. In fact, the program as it is can find the complex roots. The thing is just we chose a real starting value our function for real values will only ever put out real values. So for real starting values, it can only converge to real roots. But if we change that up, if we put a complex starting value, say guess is 0 0.5 plus 1j, j being the imaginary unit in Python, we happen to find another root 0 0.24 plus 0 0.75 times j or times i, if you're more used to the imaginary unit being called i. Either way, we have found another root. And if I put 0.5 minus 1j, I find the fourth root, which is at 0.24 minus 0.75 times j. So our little program, or actually both uh, versions of our algorithm that we implemented, are able to find all the four roots of that function. But I cheated a little. I was very smart in choosing the starting values. Now for the real values, we could visualize the function and that gave us a good intuition which starting values are good to use. For the complex roots, that's a little more difficult. So I wanna show you a way how to be more systematic about it. And we're now going to iterate over a whole bunch of starting values in hopes of being able to find all four roots this way. So let me delete the two loops here and also the guess variable. And then let me define an array of R values, which I'm going to use the numpy lint space command for minus five, five, 100. 
So let me remind you again what this does. It creates an array with 100 entries spaced evenly from minus 5 to 5. And I'm going to use this as grid points on the real axis. And I'm going to do the same with imaginary values. And I'm going to create again 100 values evenly spaced from minus 5 to 5. So together they put a 100 by 100 grid on the complex plane. And I'm going to use each point in that grid as a possible starting point and see which route it converges to. Now, why did I decide to search between minus five and five? Well, the argument for this is based more on intuition than on pure facts, and it's a little hand-waving, but let's take a look at the function. So the coefficients in the function are four times x to the four plus two x minus one. So I suspect that anything interesting that happens with this function would happen for x values that are of the same order of magnitude. And so I'm just going to try to search for the roots between minus 5 and 5, both on the real and imaginary axis, and see where this leads us. And I'm going to define a list to write the roots into. So this is going to be empty for now. And the thing is, if we decide to look at all these 10,000 points, and compute the root that the algorithm converges to at each of these points and write them into that list. This will be a list of 10,000 elements. And most of these are going to be duplicates. And it's going to be very hard to find out what the unique entries of this list are. So let's code this in a way that the list roots only contains the unique roots that the algorithm finds. So first I need uh, two loops, of course. So for r in r values, and for i and i values. So this is going to loop through all the different points in the complex plane. And then for each of these points, we compute a starting guess that it's just the real value r plus the imaginary value i times 1j, the imaginary unit. And then let me use the second version of the algorithm that I showed you. So we're going to write 4n in range 1000. And we're going to compute the next guess from the previous guess as we did before. And now our convergence condition is if the absolute value of next guess minus guess is smaller than delta, then we assume that the algorithm has converged and we have found the root. The question now is, is this root already contained in our list roots? Then it's not interesting to us, then we didn't find a new root, and then we actually don't want to write it into that list. So I'm going to define a variable, and I'm going to call already in, and it's going to be initialized as false, and we're going to set it to true if the root we just found is already in the list. And for this, we need to go through all the elements in the list for root in roots, and we need to check if it's already in. Now, to check that, I'm going to check if the absolute value of next guess, so remember next guess is the root that we just found in the current iteration of the algorithm at the current point in the complex plane, and I'm compare that to root, and if it's at least as close as delta to root, so if the current best guess for the root is at least as close as delta to an entry that we already have in our list, we assume that we have actually found the same root. We can't distinguish roots that are closer together than delta with this algorithm. So as far as we are concerned, they are the same root. And this means that already in needs to be true, because as far as we are concerned, this root is already in our list. And then we also break from the loop, so we don't need to search through the rest of the elements in roots, because we have found out that our root is already in the list. So we're breaking out of that loop. But if we're finished with this loop, and already in is still false, so if not already in, well, then the root that we just found is not in the list. So let's write it into the list. And we do that by typing roots.append and append our next guess. Then either way we need to break from the for loop because remember we only entered this statement, this if condition, 
if the algorithm for this specific starting point actually converged. So for this specific starting point, these specific values of R and I, we did find a root. So regardless of whether this root was already in the list or not, we now need to break from this for loop here that does the iteration for the current point. And that's what this break actually does. But if we did not enter this if statement, we are just in a previous iteration step of the algorithm where the algorithm has not converged yet. And so we need to proceed with the algorithm. And as we had before, we still need the guess is next guess declaration. And now this algorithm should go through all the starting points, find out the root that it converges to at the starting point, see if it's already in the list, if not write it into the list. And then after this is all done, let's just print the list. And now let's run this program. And as we see, we did indeed find four different roots. And they are of course the roots from before. So we have 0 0.43 here plus 0j, so this is a real root. We have 0 0.24 plus 0.75j, so that's one of the complex roots. The other complex root is at the bottom here, 0 0.24 minus 0.75j, and this is the other real root. We have minus 0.19. Now the imaginary part here is e to the minus 27j, so that's that's as far as our algorithm and its accuracy is concerned, this is practically zero. So this is the other real root. And so we did find four roots, so we can be confident that we have found all the roots of our polynomial. If we had not found the roots, we might want to expand the region that we search in, for instance, going from minus 10 to 10 on the real axis and going from minus 10 to 10 on the imaginary axis. Or we might actually notice that our grid points are too sparse and we might actually want to go uh, 1000 grid points in each direction. This is going to take a lot longer, of course, but it hopefully will converge to the same roots. So I'm going to let this run a little while just to prove to you that this works. And we again get the same four roots. Now, of course, there might be little differences in the less significant digits. 10 to the minus 10 was not a terribly small number, but we did a decent job of finding the roots anyway. All right, so that's it for today. I hope this has been useful. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.